So I've been scanning and developing film at home for years now, and while I've been very happy with my results, I've always wondered how the same film would look if it were professionally scanned at a lab. So today we're gonna to do just that. In partnership with District Camera here in DC, I've shot two rolls of Kodak Gold 200 and 120, and we're gonna see how home scanning stacks up against the infamous Noritsu scanner. Let's go. After shooting both rolls of gold, I dropped them off at District Camera to be developed. Mind you, the last time I had film developed in a lab instead of at home was nearly four years ago. I also had them scan the film with the idea that I would get the film back and then scan it again myself to compare the results. On top of this, I didn't actually look at the District Camera scans until I had finished the scans and conversion myself. That way the results would be totally independent and the lab scams would have no influence on my own process. I got the film back within a week or so and proceeded to scan them using my own rig. Here I use a Canon 5DS and a 100mm macro with a bright backlight panel and this like nifty 3D printed 120 film holder that allows you to scan the whole roll without cutting it. So as usual, I use Negative Lab Pro to convert my images and do a baseline color correction. I white balance off the border and crop like usual. Then I use the cinematic log tone profile and usually auto warm for the white balance. I export the file as a TIFF and then I do my final corrections in Adobe Camera Raw. Here I add a bit of color to my liking and adjust any specific colors in the HSL tab. This whole workflow is something that I perfected over many years of experimentation, and it works well for me. Um, I've been satisfied by the results I've achieved, but I've always had this lingering suspicion in the back of my mind that I'm missing out on something by not having this film professionally scanned. So let's see how these methods actually stack up. First up is a picture of an abandoned house I stumbled across while driving home one evening. Here you can see the Noritsu has a little bit of a bias to the green in the shadows, whereas I have an overall magenta shift for the entire image. I was surprised at the differences in the highlight color between my conversion and the lab scan. I'm really happy with the sky transition from yellow to orange and then to blue at the top. I think the sky reflection in the window really stands out more with the vibrant orange hue from the sunset. Next is the vase of flowers at a local winery. On initial inspection, I would say the color balance of the lab scan is actually better than my conversion. But on the other hand, the contrast and the tonality of my scan, I think is actually preferable. I think it's wise here to kind of split the color conversion into those two categories, contrast and color balance. Now, both are subject to personal preference and there truly is no correct answer. But I think with this last image, the color balance could easily be adjusted from magenta back to neutral for my conversion, and then the lab scan could have easily been warmed up to meet my preference. Now in this level of color correction, they can be applied to JPEG files from the lab, but as you probably know, more drastic color corrections are a little bit more difficult to achieve when editing JPEGs. So for more in-depth color corrections, and more importantly, changes to contrast, editing in a TIFF file is always the way to go. So here's another comparison of a picture of my friend's dad. Here, I think the district camera scans absolutely blow mine away. The skin tones from the lab scan are spot on and are totally realistic, whereas mine are a bit red and mushy. 
Overall, it seems as though my scans leaned a bit more magenta, whereas the lab scans leaned a bit green. I'm glad I waited to look at the lab scan until after I had finished my conversions, otherwise I think I may have gone a little bit more green on mine. Here are a few more comparison pictures. Let me know which one of the conversions you prefer in the comments below. All right, so that wraps up the film comparison section, but before I go, I wanna talk about my experience with this guy, the Mamiya C3. I absolutely love shooting with this camera. Yeah, it's heavy and clunky compared to the Yashica, but the viewfinder is so bright, and the 80 millimeter f2.8 lens is phenomenal. I love how mechanical this camera is and the sounds of the interlocks for changing lenses and the film advance winder, the cocking of the shutter, the opening of the viewfinder, it sounds so good. I freaking love this camera. All right, so what are my initial impressions of Gold 200? Well, from what I can tell, it's sharp, the saturation is good, the warmth kind of matches my personal style, and personally, I kind of prefer the lower speed films like Gold 200 so I can shoot at larger apertures during the day. It seems to be about a couple bucks cheaper per roll when compared to Portra 160 or 400, so that's always nice. Um, I think I need to get a couple more rolls under my belt before I can make a full determination, but so far, I really like it. All right, so that wraps it up for today. Let me know your experience with home versus lab scanning and if you have any tips and tricks for getting the best colors out of Gold 200. Thanks again to District Camera for the partnership in this comparison and go check them out if you're ever in the DC area. All right, see you in the next one.